again, my name is Devin Knight, the president of Pragmatic Works, and I'm excited for another small series today to start with you on Power Automate around working with date expressions. So the expression language with inside of Power Automate is really powerful. It lets you extend what you can do with inside of the basic capabilities with inside of Power Automate to be able to make things dynamic. And so what we're gonna be doing in this very short series, couple videos, is exploring some of the capabilities, uh, basic and advanced, with inside of the date expression capabilities in Power Automate. Uh, now, for those of you that are new to our channel at Pragmatic Works, we of course recommend that you go ahead and subscribe as well as hit that notification bell so that way you'll be notified whenever there's new videos and like this one if you if you enjoy these types of videos. And also let me know in the chat if you have specific kinds of date problems that you're trying to deal with. Now, in today's video, we're going to be looking at some of the basics of working with Power Automate expression and more specifically date expression. So let me go ahead and pull up my screen here to take a look at this together. And the way I'd like to start this series is walking through some very basic examples of Power Automate date expressions that you might want to use. So I have a very basic flow here that's on my screen right now. And this is just going to walk us through some of the basics of expressions that we can use. A very uh, simple manual trigger to get us started off. But with inside of this flow, what we're going to see is I'm using several compose actions to be able to just display the changes that we're making in our data using the expression language. So to get you a little peek at what this looks like, if, if I go into each one of these compose statements, I actually have my expression. Now, the expression that we're using in this first one is to be able to return back the current date and time. A very basic thing that you would do in likely many different expression languages, but to return back the current date and time, we will use a function called UTC now. Now, I actually have a little bit of extra text here of the, the expression because whenever I am gonna show you what the output of the value looks like, I also wanna display the expression right next to it so you can know what the output was. But really all we need to do if we wanted to return back the current date and time is to use this UTC now function that you're seeing above my head here. So using the UTC now function seen right here will allow us to be able to return back the current date and time. A very simple basic way to get started with inside of the date expression capabilities inside of Power Automate. So current date time UTC now will return back that value. The next one that we're gonna take a look at though is gonna return back a formatted date and time. So if you wanted to be able to return back a date that was formatted, maybe you wanted to strip off the time from the end of it, you just wanted to see the date, you could use a format date time function and using the format date time function, which again, you see above my head here, that format, format date time function will allow you to not only return back the date, but then format it in a particular style. So I'm formatting it in a more traditional US style here where we have the month first, but I could switch things up and have the day appear first or the month appear first. You can switch it up if you wanted the year to appear first. It's just a matter of changing how the format is displayed right here. So you have different format styles that you can plug in, and depending on the format style that you plug in to this expression, you'll be able to get a different return back of your date expression or your date value. Uh, format date time can be used on things other than UTC now. We're using it on UTC now just to be able to return back some date. But if I had values that were coming in dynamically from my data source, I could also format those dates using format date time as well. All right, so that's our next one here is just how to format a date. Using format date time, I'm able to pass in a date value and then return back a formatted version of the date. And that's what we're seeing again in this expression. Pass in a date, return back a formatted version of that date. And that's why you have the comma separator here to separate what is the date value and then what is the formatted value you want to return back. The next one here is being able to parse out values from a date. So say, for example, I wanted to return back just the day of the month or I wanted to return back the month number. Uh, you have the ability to parse out dates as well. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. There's actually one of the things you'll learn as you work with inside the expression language, especially with dates, is there's usually two or three ways that you can solve the same problem. So if you notice I show one way to do this, but maybe you've already done things like this in the past your own way, nothing wrong with that. Uh, there's multiple ways you can solve these kind of problems as you're, as you're working with inside of Power Automate. Now, what you can see in this example above my head is that we are returning back, again, using the format date time function, we are returning back the current date, but we're telling Power Automate that we only wanna return back the year and nothing else. So just return back the year, that's all we wanna see as we return back this value. So 
As we look at my example over here, this is actually where I've run these expressions. You can see what gets returned back. So UTC now returns back the current date with the time append appended to the end of it. If I were to go down a little bit here to look at the formatted date time, you can see here's how it formats the date if we were to do the formatting that we did just a moment ago. And if we're looking at the one that we're tackling right now, the parse year from date, using the format date time function with the year only return back, you can see it just returns back the year and nothing else. So we're kind of seeing here's what the end result looks like if we were to look within the uh, executed version of the flow. This is going to show us what we should expect our values to return back. Another one that might be interesting as well is if maybe you wanted to return back the day of the week. So say, for example, you have a flow that you don't want to uh, perform any action on a weekend. You could use the day of week function, which you're seeing right here. And the day of week function will allow you to pass in a date and it will return back a zero ordinal value, zero being Sunday, six being Saturday, where it'll show you which day of the week as far as the number value that you are returning back. So I'm getting the number three return back because as of the day of me recording this, uh, today is Wednesday. And so it's zero is Sunday, Monday is one, Tuesday is two, Wednesday is three. So it starts with zero and works its way to six. So if I wanted to build in some logic so that I didn't perhaps email people over the weekend, I could actually build in something that says, hey, if the day of the week is returned back as either zero or six, then I don't want to send this out. I want to delay it or push it to another day. So that's something you can do. And actually, that's one of the examples we're going to look at as we talk about more advanced date expression problems later on in this video series. Another common one here that you may want to consider doing is the add dates. So maybe you want to be able to run your flow and pass in a follow-up task, uh, maybe in Dynamics or maybe in SharePoint or wherever it may be, but you want to increase the date value that you're looking at. You could use something like the add dates expression that you see right here. So using the add dates expression, you're going to pass in a date. Then you'll have a comma, tell, me, tell it how many days that you want to go forward. So in this case, I'm going seven days into the future. And then you can also built in, you can format the date as well. So built into the add days function, you can also format it to tell it what style of formatting you want to see the date return back as. So this is an add days function that allows you to pass in a date and increase the number of days, or you could do a negative number there and decrease the number of days as well uh, to return back a specific date. The next one here that we'll take a peek at is add time at different intervals. And so this is the add to time function. This one is particularly helpful. Uh, what I like about this one is you can use this one. Like I mentioned earlier, there's about two or three different ways you can solve the same problem. Using the add to time function could replace some of these other ones that we're looking at. So you could do add to time or you could do add days. They could both solve the same problem. Uh, the add to time function, the nice thing about it is you can change the intervals that are being used. So right now I'm telling it that I want to increase by months, but I could also tell it increase by days, by seconds, by minutes, by whatever kind of unit of measure that I want using the add to time function. So it's a very simple little function. You say add to time, pass in your date, tell it the interval that you would like to pass in or the number, the units you would like to go forward. And then you could tell it then the, the interval is really here. The interval that we're looking at in this case is month. So when I tell it I want to go one month ahead, by the way, you can still format it, it returns back a month from today. So it's returning back a month into the future here, return, uh, shown here. So that's the add to time function. Again, another way to do something that look very similar to what we did with add to days. And then similar to add to days, but kind of the inverse of it, you have subtract days. So what subtract days will do here is it's going to, as you might expect, subtract the number of days that you specify rather than adding the number of days. So just a different style function that you can choose from. So you could use the UTC now function, say the number of days you want to subtract. And then here you can say, in this case, I'm actually doing months, not uh, days, but I'm telling it I want to subtract one month from the date that we're looking at. Now you'll notice that in this case, I chose not to use the optional parameter to do formatting. And you can see when I don't format the value, it brings back the, the date and time all appended here together. And so uh, it might be helpful to continue to use the formatting functions or the formatting capabilities like we saw up here. So in our previous example, we formatted the date. I could have also done that with subtract a time, but it's an optional parameter. And I showed, wanted to show you how you could skip it potentially if you wanted to by just not including the formatting. It's optional. You don't have to do it. 
Now, there are many other date expressions that I would certainly recommend that you take a peek at. The reference guide to the date expressions I will put inside of the chat. So if you'd like, not inside the chat, but inside of the description of this video. So if you're really interested in learning more about the different date expressions, this is the reference guide with inside of the Microsoft documentation to show you all of the different options that you have. And there, of course, are many of them that I did not discuss here today, but it's worth taking a peek at some of these. So maybe, for example, you wanted to convert a time from one time zone to another time zone. You might explore the convert to time zone function. Uh, maybe you want to look at the parse date time function. So I showed one way to parse a date time, but there's other ways that you can do it as well. So there's a lot of different functions that are in here that you might find very interesting to explore. Uh, you'll also find there's another very useful guide when you're trying to figure out what are the intervals that you would potentially want to pass in. So let me show you here what the uh, guide for that is. But you'll notice here that the, whenever we're using functions like the add to time function, that the unit of time that you can pass in, you have several different options here. You can pass in seconds, hours, minutes, days, weeks, months, years. All of that can be what you pass into those functions to tell it how far you want to go forward, how far you want to go backward as far as the unit of measure that you're identifying. So this is just a little peek into the different kinds of date time functions that are available to you. What we're going to do in our next couple videos is explore some more advanced capabilities. While this flow design here might be very simple, where we're just kind of seeing some of the different kinds of date time functions that we can work with, what we're going to do and end up doing in our next couple videos is looking at some very specific scenarios of how you might want to leverage these date time expressions together to be able to solve more complex problems. Things like I mentioned of, hey, I, I, want, to, I want certain things to happen on non-weekend days, so I want to skip weekend days. Or maybe I want to return back the last day of the current month. I always want to create a date value that is the last day of the current month, something like that. We're going to explore some of these more advanced date expressions. And sometimes you might be able to solve some of these problems not using expressions, just using the actions that are provided to you. But it is, in many cases, going to be helpful to be familiar with the expression language and understand how to use that expression language with inside of your flow design. That's it for this video. Of course, we do recommend that you uh, make sure you hit that notification bell, sign up for uh, to subscribe. And then if you like this video, make sure you let us know as well. Like the video, and so that way we'll know we want more content like this. And then comment below and let us know what kind of date challenges are you having. Maybe I can integrate those into this series. If you have some date challenges that you're trying to work through, let me know what those are, and then I'll see if maybe we can integrate that into our video series that we have here today. Thank you so much, and look forward to continuing this series. We'll uh, show you some more new interesting things you can do with Power Automate as we move along. Thanks a lot.